Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Monday, December 27th, around noontime, mountain time, 2021. Almost 2022. I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas. There is more global warming goodness in the forecast. We also have an update on the Reykjanes Peninsula as ground deformation reaches a maximum. But the big story, Western U.S. to close 2021 with record cold and piling snow. Keep calm. It's piling up and it's boom time. Snow and cold will make for difficult post-Christmas travel across the western and northern United States. Currently six states with avalanche warnings. Hello! That is a record. Snow is expected to continue as winter storm warnings extend from Seattle to San Diego. And here is your snow forecast through Wednesday, the next 48 hours, hours of powers. There are blizzard warnings up in Minnesota and North Dakota right now. We'll get to that in just a moment. Palisades Tahoe closed due to heavy snow conditions. This is a ski resort in a, in a state where they said there will never be snow anymore. In fact, there's so much snow they can't move it around. 100 mile an hour winds and avalanche warnings at Palisades. All lifts closed today due to storm conditions. All lifts at Palisades Tahoe are closed. Village shops and restaurants will remain open <laughs> as the global warming goodness wreaks havoc. We're here live at Northern California Storm Live updates. I-80, Highway 50 remain closed. 69,000 without power. Well, holy macaroni. Pacific Gas and Electric set at 8.45 a.m., 69,000 customers without power in the company's Sierra division. And this is up since last night. I-80 remains closed from Applegate Road. Here's the closures. I-80 closed from Applegate Road to the Sierra Nevada State Line. U.S. 50 closed from Placerville to Myers. EB SR20 closed at Nevada State. And SR89 closed from Eagle Point Campground to Bliss State Park. So take heed and stay out of the way. Uh... Let's check out the power outage map now. We're here live at poweroutage.us, and those numbers have increased since 8 a.m. It's now 1047, so about three hours. It has increased from 70,000 to 113,000 outages in California, and that is only going to increase. We have outages in Oregon and Alaska as well, Washington State and Michigan. All those states, those outages will continue to increase as snow increases in those regions over the next 48 hours, especially the Sierras. So we could see this number probably hit a quarter of a million by the end of tonight. And let's check out the GFS model to see where the global warming goodness will be falling on your Monday. Boom! The Sierra is getting crushed with up to 18 inches falling by midnight as of my voice. Some light snow in northern Nevada, and then that system's going to move down into the southern Rockies and wreak havoc through Tuesday into Wednesday night. While a system moves through the upper Midwest and cold air and wind, blustery conditions, and there's that little snow pocket I promised you in uh, Iowa before Christmas, and there she blows. It's looking about eight inches in the Quad Cities. So heads up there. We also have snow in uh, central Pennsylvania along the Appalachian Spine, and that's about as far out as we want to go, except to notice that right around here, maybe the third day of January, we could see a system moving through the south and bringing snow to the likes of Tennessee and maybe this is some of the southern tier, which is supposedly sweltering under record heat. Well, that's all about to end in the new year. Hazardous winter weather conditions for portions of the west. Northern Plains and Northeast, accumulating snowfall, bitterly cold temperatures and gusty winds will affect the western U.S. and Northern Plains into tonight. A wintry mixture will move into portions of the Northeast through the day across Alaska. A series of storms and cold weather will continue this week. Meanwhile, record warmth across the Southeast will continue and will come to an end in just a few days as we head into the new year. Minnesota, North Dakota. Blizzard warnings and watches for dozens of counties. So click on your area for more information. Winter storm watches throughout the West from the Continental Divide West. Click on your county for more information. Dams burst in Northeast Brazil as the region is hit by floods. Cosmic ray flux much? Seems to be a lot of that happening. <laughs> As scientists identify a new type of storm called an atmospheric lake. Now, the reason we're sharing this with you is because of the it's coming from um, an outlet called Technology Today at the India Times. And we've just lost it. There it is. 
But I want to draw your attention here. The new weather condition can be found in certain parts of Earth with dense and slow-moving pools of water rich in moisture. Pools of water rich in moisture. Hello. Now, to be quite honest, this is actually a phenomenon called an atmospheric lake, and it's simply when a portion of an atmospheric river breaks away from the main system, slows down and stalls over a region, but it has a lot to do with the ever-increasing cosmic rays on planet Earth due to the waning magnetosphere and the shutdown of the sun as we descend into the next grand minima. This atmospheric lake condition, well, happens when slow-moving pools of water rich in moisture move across the surface. I hate those moisture-rich pools of water. Seismic update, no quakes of note, which is good news. We had some blocked echoes in Fiji near Honga Tonga. Iunga, or whatever it's called down there in the region that has been puffing and passing regularly every day or so to 10,000 feet. Now, Worldwide Volcano News Update, we have Chevalouche just puffing to 16,000 feet. Nevados de Ruiz, which had an increase in seismicity about a week and a half ago, is now shooting out regularly above 20,000 there to 22,000 feet today, 21,000 feet at Sungay. Nevados de Chilan has, is puffing. Just puffing and passing. Reventador, 15,000. Suanosima, Sabancaya, Yasur is coming to the picture here. And Honga, Tonga, Hapai, puffing in a cyclic eruption at 10,000 feet is the latest update as of just moments ago. Now, Thagradosval volcano update continuing ground deformation has reached same pre-eruptive February values. Now, that's a lot of words, but that means... The ground deformation is the same as moments before the Earth split open and erupted for 90 plus days. So we're waiting for another paroxysm in the surface of the planet in the region of the Reykjanes Peninsula in Iceland, somewhere between Kellir and Grindavik town, and for the lava to begin to flow. Now, the last update wasn't, has only been at Christmas here at Iceland Geology, and they talk about strong earthquake activity in Fagradishval Mountain. And that has since, well, decreased quite a bit. And I'll take you over here live to the map. Here we are at the Reykjanes Peninsula live. And you can see there's a lot less activity and it has since dropped, up, dropped off quite considerably over the last, let's say, 12 hours specifically. So that's an interesting uh, update. The seismic activity is quieting down. What does it mean? Well, with the micro-seismic tremor uh, reducing and the sun setting on Iceland, there are live streams here that we are watching, and there has been no eruption as of now. And the seismic activity, as we said, has dropped off quite precipitously. But there is definitely something uh, happening in this region, as can be confirmed by ground deformation and scientists. Now, here we have the latest update on what the magma chamber may look like and some of the contributing effects to the last eruption, as well as maybe... The imminent eruption happening soon. Fræðing til þess að skýra aðeins út fyrir okkur hvað það er sem veldur þessum skjáltum. Já, ef við horfum á þessa skýringamynd hérna, þá sjáum við hérna allra neðst á myndinni er gimstuhólf sem var við... Now, clearly we don't speak Icelandic, most of us, I'm sure a few of us in here do, but I will let this run through real quick here and we'll just, well, let's just look at it here at the freeze frame. You could see here that there's a deep magma chamber, 15 to 17 kilometers at depth, probably a dike coming off here to the east. And then there is upward movement between 17 and 7 kilometers. Now, the crust here is on Iceland is between 6 and 7 kilometers, quite thin because we're at a mid-ocean ridge. And there's not a lot of deposition and buildup on it, like an, on, on a bigger continental craton. So we have very thin crust to mantle below and very easy conduits to around 15 to 17 kilometers and access to huge amounts of magma. Now, this magma moves up between the 7, 17 kilometer region and then through sheeted dike systems. And that simply means uh, that this magma finds weaknesses along horizontal planes here and that moves out into a sheeted dike. These sheeted dikes can then become buoyant here and you see these little bumps up. And this buoyancy is what causes the magma to reach the surface and erupt into a cinder cone. So the magma has been in place as of now in the sheeted dikes. And what we're waiting for now is these buoyancy movements and for the magma to come up to the surface. But I'll leave you links to this video because it is quite interesting and in Icelandic. So you can practice your Icelandic. <laughs> Now, 
var sem sagt plötuhlík, sem sagt skilin á flekaskilin þegar hún hnikuðust og þar að leiðin dóknaðist leið fyrir kvikunum áttum til leiðiborgs og hún fór alla leið til leiðiborgs og gaus og, og við vitum öll að hún sér stóð í sex mánuði. En núna er staðan þannig að, og er líklega staðan þannig að, að hérna, kvikan er hún að streymi fyrir þeim neðri hlutan á þessum aðfærslu, þessum aðfærslu æð sem að myndaðist fyrir árinu en efri hlutin er lokaður. Þannig að eitthvað hefur vandið þegar lokast fyrir hann og kvikan sem, sagt, sem er komið kemst ekki allan í til leiðiborgs. Exactly. Do auroras make sound we can hear? The true answer is surprisingly complicated. And the answer is yes. <laughs> it's a question that has puzzled observers for centuries. Do the fantastic green and crimson lights displays of the aurora borealis produce any discernible sound? Well, there are historic claims. Auroral noise was the subject of particularly lively debate in the first decades of the 20th century. When it counts... Can you believe this? From settlements across northern latitudes reported that sound sometimes accompanied the mesmerizing light displays in their skies. Now, the way that they describe these in historical claims is not at all what we're about to listen to. Back in the olden days, witnesses told of quiet, almost imperceptible crackling, whooshing, or even whizzing noises during particularly violent nor northern lights displays. In the early 1930s, for instance, Personal testimonies started flooding into the Shetland News, the weekly newspaper of the sub-Arctic Shetland Islands, liking the sound of the Northern Lights to rustling silk or two planks meeting flat ways. And this sounds more like two planks meeting flat ways. Here is the clap sound of the Northern Lights from 70 meters recently captured. 11th March, 2022. And it's worth the wait. My goodness, that was annoying. And we're going to listen to this snap one more time. We'll bring you back to it. That is the sound of the northern lights. Sounds more like a clink or a clank to me. And I'm no crank. That's a boom to knowledge. Hope you got something out of the video. Proper fire planning prevents piss poor performance. That's what we say. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. And be safe out there. If you're in the West, it's only going to get worse. And we love you. Anyone in there?